Hi there, and welcome to the premiere of Vintage Guitar Legacies, a mini-series delving into the history, quirks, and sounds of some very special guitars. My name is Sarah James, and today we will be talking about the 1966 Gibson Trini Lopez Cherry Sunburst Deluxe Model, a variation of the Gibson Barney Kessel Jazz Guitar. <laughs> Trini Lopez endeared himself to many people over the decades. Generations of folks have enjoyed his music from Lemon Tree to uh, If I Had a Hammer. Uh, he was a wonderful uh, breath of fresh air during a difficult time in our country. And this guitar came to me uh, not long after Trini passed away in August of 2020, uh, I believe from complications of, of COVID. But what really makes this guitar special is it's got Trini's signature on it in many, many ways. In 1964, Gibson approached Trini and asked him to design a guitar. He was on the rise and uh, be becoming very popular. And Gibson at that time had decided that maybe they should have a model uh, named after the artists or involving the artists in the design. Hence, this Trini Lopez deluxe signature sunburst guitar. So this guitar has very special elements that are um, informed by Trini's desire. For example, the uh, markings on the fretboard, the little linked up reverse diamonds, the horns on the, on the body of the guitar are his idea as well. But Trini loved this idea of these really, really cool, uh, nifty uh, horns. I, I love it. Um, Another thing that makes this guitar really unique is, is this nameplate down here on the, on the frame. Only the signature model has this. As far as we know, it's one of five ever made. What makes it unique is the diamond-shaped pickguard. Most of the guitars that were made by Gibson from 64 to 70, I believe, um, had a typical standard rounded kind of a pickguard. But Trini really dug this idea, especially with the diamond-shaped F-holes. The standard Barney Kessel jazz guitar, in fact, most guitars, uh, solid or hollow, hollow body guitars of this nature, have F-holes, which is more classic. If you see them on a violin or viola or a cello. But he really wanted to make this special, and he did. I think he really succeeded with these elements. With me today is my good friend Paul Meisenzahl. And he will be doing a quick demo and discussion with me on his take of this vintage classic. Check it out. Was fantastic. Oh, what a great demo. Thanks for being with us today and uh, demonstrating this beautiful guitar. So tell me, what, what are your thoughts? Well, th this is a really cool guitar and there's not a lot of them out there. Uh, a Trini Lopez Deluxe, I think they call it. And uh, Trini was basically a, a, a folk singer 
who played electric guitar. Mm. And he had like a bass player and a drummer. And uh, But he played in the style of uh, Peter, Paul, and Mary. And, you know, the, the songs were Pete from Cedar, the Fucker. right? Huh? I, if I Had a Hammer? Yeah, If I Had a Hammer was, yeah, was Peter, right. Paul, and Mary. Yeah. And, um, and uh, but anyway, uh, so he was playing the Gibson Barney Kessel, which is what this guitar is based on, which is really unique because it's, it's a full hollow guitar and it had the, the double Florentine cutaway, which is really visually stunning to, to see. You could see it a mile away for being really different. And also had the, the uh, six on a side headstock that Gibson had used on the Firebird. Mm -hmm. And uh, so anyway, Trini Lopez was hugely successful. And uh, so they decided to give him a, a signature deal, Gibson did. And um, this was based on the Barney Kessel that he played. And then they made a second one, which was a thin hollow body, like an ES-335. Oh, and that's what yeah. Dave Grohl plays. He okay. plays the Trini Lopez, the, thin, um, thin body. the standard version. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, this is very cool because it has, it has a standby switch. Very unusual. So you can... You can uh, these are things the that Trini... The tr oh, Trini asked for, for yeah. the, the Barney Kessel had the normal, you know, the, the normal two pickups and two volumes, two tones, yeah. and, and the pickup selector. But yeah. uh, Trini wanted the, the kill switch, standby switch. Or we, yeah. the young people call it a kill switch. Yeah. <laughs> but um, thank you. <laughs> and then Trini's thing was diamonds, so it, it has the, uh, you know, instead of f holes, they're diamond holes, and the pick guard is diamond shape, and then the split diamond uh, fingerboard inlays. I love the tailpiece. The tailpiece yeah. is very interesting because if you're in production, like in, in, a, in a factory, the tailpiece itself is just a standard Gibson ES-175 tailpiece. But what they did is they made this nice carved wooden piece that slides in like that and, and goes like that. That's so it, amazing. It takes their, their normal Gibson tailpiece and made it really unique. Fancy. And fancy, yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, so, so it's a very cool guitar. Is it unusual for Gibson or a guitar company to come out with a signature model. I mean, back in that era, is that kind of not really a I new mean, thing for them? Well, the know, Les Paul. And, and their catalogs, they always used to have a couple pages called the Gallery of Greats, and huh. had their artists. And, and of course, Gibson has a long history in jazz guitars, but uh, at the time, in the early 60s, the, the Les Paul wasn't being produced anymore. Mm -hmm. And Les Paul was really the big Gibson, mm -hmm. the big Gibson artist, mm -hmm. but um, in the, I think, when this guitar came out, or when the when the Barney Kessel came out, they had Barney Kessel, they had Johnny Smith, and then oh, they yeah. had... Oh, um, yeah. There's a Johnny Smith hanging on a wall there. Right, right. And then they had uh, Tal Farlow. And um, the Johnny Smith guitar is a very traditional jazz guitar. Mm -hmm. This guitar is wacky. You know, it's got, <laughs> it's got the double cutaway, and it's a big, yeah. fat jazz guitar. Yeah. And then uh, the Tal Farlow was even stranger, because it had, like, a rounded um, cutaway, like an F-style mandolin. Okay. Very intricately, you know, uh, yeah. expensive to make, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, I'll bet. But anyway, you know, so but at the time, Trini Lopez was more popular than all those other guys. Now, is that a laminate body, top and body? or I, do you think I believe that's... this is a laminate okay. uh, top and body, yeah. which allows you to get pretty mm -hmm. loud without, mm -hmm. without yeah. feedback. Yeah. But um, I, I think that that is the case. But, it had, you know, it has the ebony fingerboard and the... Mm -hmm. and the uh, yeah, I love these little, and bridge. little things here, these little... Yeah. Touches. Little inlays, but anyway, this it's a really fine guitar, and, and my, my recollection is is that this model, the deluxe model, they only made a few hundred in the whole time it was in production huh. in the '60s, and uh, they made a lot more of the the, the uh, thin body one. Right. Um, yeah. So there's a few thousand of those maybe out there, a couple thousand. Yeah. Uh, whereas there's only a few hundred mm -hmm. of these, you know, that yeah. are ever made. So to be sitting here, you know, playing it yeah. and talking about it, it's really cool. <laughs> Do you have a favorite Trini Lopez story? Oh. No, o only that I remember seeing him on TV. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, he had we, his own TV show, right? He had a TV show, and, and but I do recall, if I had a hammer, I mean, that was, you know, that was New York folk music. That's right. And he, But Trini was a Texas guy, I think, and then a yes, West Coast guy. Yes, we're in uh, Dallas. Yeah, and then he got signed by Sinatra, like out in, in Los That's Angeles. Right. Yeah. But he was playing in that style of folk music, but it was with electric guitar. So for a young lad like myself at the time, that was very cool. You know. Oh, yeah. I didn't think you were born yet. No, I was born very young. <laughs> <laughs> now no, I lost my train of yeah. <laughs> Well, I heard an but, interesting, read something very interesting the other day about Trini. It's a um, TV show. Uh, I think it only lasted a year. There's an album of music from it. His backup band was The Ventures. Ah, nice. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's still around. I Very think. cool. I suppose you could find it. Very cool. Yeah.
YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Well, I, I, in the last you know year or so, uh, did see a video with him with his trio, and the, you know he had a guy playing a precision bass. They had blonde Fender amps. The bass player had a blonde showman, and Trini had a blonde twin, which is all, about as rare as this guitar is. Really. And um, and then he had a drummer, so it was like a it was like a little electric trio, playing playing neo folk music, you know, like wow. a new kind of folk music, and he was greatly successful. I mean, he sold lots and lots of records all over EM Radio. He didn't get the pushback that Bob Dylan got. No, actually, he went electric before Dylan did. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> if we put it in those terms, as a yeah. folk singer, right? Yeah, yeah. But uh, well, he was doing. You know, he was an entertainer. He was doing covers more than more than you know the the songwriter thing. Mm -hmm. But um, his his uh, unique arrangements of what were fundamentally folk tones uh, really had were you know resonated with the public, and, and he sold lots of records. He was a very endearing musician. Absolutely, absolutely. Well loved. Yeah. yeah. It just died in 2020. Ooh, did not yeah. know that. Yeah. Yep. Well, he left us his there music it. and he left yep. us cool guitars like I'm this one. Just uh, happy to have it, take care of it for a while, and yeah, and see where it goes. Paul, thank you so much for for being here, being a part of this. It's a really a joy. It's actually fun to play music with you too. We've got the band that we're <laughs> sure. we've got a gig coming up in a couple of weeks, so. That's but fun. thanks, a great, great job. You're just a wealth well, of great for, information. Thanks for inviting me over to play, you know, one, another yeah. one of your really cool guitars. Well, thank you. You're very welcome. Yeah. yeah. Hey, thanks for tuning in to the premiere episode of Vintage Guitar Legacies. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe, follow, and like all of our social media pages. See you next time. <laughs>